with example two, we're asked to determine, we're asked to graph the function y equals negative three over x and determine if the function is linear or nonlinear. So I made a table here from negative five to five as instructed in the directions for the problem. And we'll go ahead and, and just go through and do each one when x equals negative five, y equals negative three divided by negative five, which equals three fifths or six tenths. When x equals negative four, it'd be negative three over negative four, which equals three fourths. Negative three is negative three over negative three, which equals one. Negative two is negative three over negative two, which equals three halves. Negative one is negative three over negative one, which equals three. Zero is undefined. And the reason for that is because <clears throat> we have zero in the denominator. Negative three divided by zero is undefined. At one, it's negative three divided by one, which equals negative three. At two, it's negative three divided by two, which equals negative three halves. And we should notice here that it's just going to be the opposite of what it was on the negative side. So at three, it's going to be negative one. At four, it's going to be negative three fourths. And at five, it's going to be negative three fifths. So we have here, I'll go ahead and make tick marks going this way as well. We'll make each one of these one half and each one of these one half. So at negative five, we'd be, here's negative five. And at negative five, we're at three fifths. So we're right about here. At negative four, we are at three fourths, which is right about here. Here's negative four here. Negative three, negative two, negative one. At negative three, we are at one. At negative two, we are at one and a half, which is going to be right here. And at negative one, we are at three, which is going to be right here. And at zero, it's undefined. So we can't put a mark there. Uh, what we'll learn later on when we study functions in greater detail, uh, later on it, it, with rational functions like this, when we have uh, an undefined value in the denominator, there's going to be a vertical imaginary or invisible line that the curve will never touch. At one, we're at negative three. So again, here's one, three is over here. So we're gonna be right here. At two, we're at negative three halves or negative one and a half. At three, we're at negative one. So here's three here. We're down at negative one. At four, we're at negative three fourths. So right here. And at five, we're at negative three fifths, which is going to be right about here. And if we connect those dots with a smooth curve, or at least as well as someone who is not artistic, such as myself, we end up with this curve here, which is a basic shape for a rational function where we have a variable term in the denominator. And if you notice, it's never going to touch the, the x-axis either. The further we go ahead, like if we went to 10, it'd be negative 3 tenths. At 100, it'd be negative 3 one hundredths. So it's going to get closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's never going to get there. So we're asked, is the function uh, linear or nonlinear? Well, it's obviously nonlinear. It's not a line. And again, that is, that is the nature of uh, a rational function such as this. And we'll learn about that in, in later math courses. Uh, right now, all we need to recognize is we graph these points, connected them with a smooth curve. It is not a line, and therefore, it is nonlinear.